Great Fight TV presents another season of Pro Mazda action here live on your beloved Race Spot TV around Laguna Seca, Laguna Seca itself, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Of course, now named Weather Tech Raceway Laguna Seca. This circuit has evolved in name over the years, but not in circuit layout itself. We still have the famous corkscrew on offer with its five and a half story drop that will challenge our open wheel talent today in pro Mazda action. It's week one, the opening round for season four 2019 of iRacing's Pro Mazda Championship around the three and a half kilometer, 2.2 mile layout of Laguna Seca. Now here's the schedule on screen. We begin at Laguna Seca, we end the season for 20 laps around Phillip Island. Our broadcasted races for the event will take place at Laguna Seca. Brand Taps for round three, of course, Interlagos for round five, and then we will broadcast the final three rounds of the campaign at Zambort, Barcelona, the brand new circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia and iRacing, and of course, Phillip Island. Randy Chenneth alongside myself, Jonathan Simon for today's action, and Randy, the grid is up on screen, and look who's on pole. It's a man named Martin Arnoldes, champion of Pro Mazda. Yeah, I don't think it's any shock here that Martin's on pole here in week uh, coming off in towards week one around here around this great track at Laguna Seca. Andre Cini, very good qualifying as well in row two. A couple familiar names also. Yeah, plenty of names, of course. No Julian Dunn, unfortunately. Previous champion, of course, in Pro Mazda. And we have most of the regular names here, Randy, that race Pro Mazda are ready to go again. Yeah, we definitely do. And um, you hear these guys already getting ready, getting on the grid. Some of these revs already getting built up. As you can see on your screen, though, not the entire field on just yet. Still waiting for a bulk of these cars to get there. But relatively medium-sized grid here, Johnny. 15 cars, but it gets crowded around here. And I know this is an iconic sort of long-term uh, partnership. I remember back in the day when I think some of the World Championship upper-level series were running around here in these cars. I remember seeing a video of Gregor Hutu absolutely blowing a start and killing an entire field in this Formula Mazda at this very racetrack. So a lot of history with iRacing in this combo. And if the greatest sim racer of all time has suffered with issues at a challenging track like Laguna Seca, how will this talent fare today? with 22 laps of racing action coming up. Lights illuminate, engines rev. We go green from Laguna Seca. Still two by two for the front three rows. It looks like Arnoldus had a good jump right now, but Harley Lewis up the inside, heading into the second corner now into this double apex left-hander. Brilliant start by Harley Lewis, who promotes himself to third. How about Jean-Michel Noyon with a brilliant start? So here they go through themselves up into the second and fourth position respectively. Here they go through this difficult left-hander of turn six and then the Ray Hall straight here on the run down to the corkscrew. Have a look at this, 91 meters to drop these drivers into the next corner. I saw a bit of contact there in the back of the pack between uh, Perez and Nezic, but uh, they keep it together there in the braking zone. And this will be the end of the first lap here in our 22 lap event. Brilliant stuff from these guys. And Johnny, I know a lot of guys you know, in these quicker cars, especially a lot of the European drivers, aren't really big fans of this circuit. Honestly, I'm gonna say it, a lot of the Americans as well. It's a difficult place to pass, but it's one of the most iconic racetracks in the world, isn't it? Especially with this fight happening for second right now. Andre Cini trying to get around Harley Lewis around the outside. That's a difficult move to make stick, but you can do it. But not having the pace right now with the one car to get it done around the outside, Lewis will hold on there. But I don't know if anywhere else in the world, Johnny, where you drop nearly 100 meters as quickly in a race car as you do, as when you drop off the top of the hill, going down uh, going down the court skew here at Laguna Seca. That entire sort of three-corner sequence, you know, the first two corners that are famous. But I honestly really love that long downhill left that drops you down to the final two corners. Just so much speed you can carry through there in so many different cars, and especially in these Pro Mazdas, all this downforce you have, you're probably keeping the throttle on all the way down the hill. And issues for Arnoldus. I think he's had a slowdown or something's gone wrong for him. The lead now handed to Harley Lewis. And he was battling for the second position earlier on. About to concede that spot. Now he's into first. 
Yeah, so Arnold is definitely something going wrong. We'll get a replay up here on your screen. Identify exactly what happened. Rewind these cameras back 40 seconds. We'll see what has happened to Martin here. He still got the lead here. Was it going into this fast left-hander? This corner is so difficult, and I turn think that's six. what it was. Yeah, turn six. He just didn't get it right. He lost so much speed, and Harley Lewis, when you have that much overspeed, the opportunity just opens up for you as you get to the top of the hill. And Martin, I think, smartly there, didn't really defend going into the court through. He just sort of let him have it. Very wise move there by uh, the driver in the number three. And that is, I think, one of the most difficult corners most underrated corners in terms of difficulty in the world everybody struggles through there and it's because randy the dip of the apex doesn't help and the fact that it's so tight on entry exit there's a lot of bumps on that curve to the outside and add to the fact that on all this those tires still weren't up to pressure on lap two yeah exactly you're going to be relatively you know a little bit cold tires a heavy race car as well these guys would have just came off from qualifying where the pressures would have been up the fuel loads would have been light you get out there and race trim and it's going to be the exact opposite situation heavy race car uh not so high tire pressures cars aren't going to feel too responsive uh, and he definitely has responded well he's already cut that gap down to the five of harley lewis and he's all over the back of him as they head down the front straight away another move might be on here in towards turn one this track notorious for the difficulty of overtaking. Lewis holds the inside line robustly, and he's gonna force on all this to the outside. Now the thing with that outside line, Randy, is I feel that's gonna get better as the race evolves because the track's going to evolve. There's gonna be a lot more grip in those final five laps for that outside line. You're right, there's definitely some, you know, a little bit of rubber gets put down, especially with 15 cars, 14 cars, excuse me, as Pascal Filoto already two laps down. Not actually sure if that driver even took the start. Actually, no, I take that back. He did put in a qualifying time, so he should have been on the grid. But you're right, one of the actual areas where you're going to see that, Johnny, big time. Of course, you look around the racetrack here, one of the big things they've added in this sim is the fact that the dirt can get knocked up onto the circuit. The corkscrew is famous for that as they come screaming into here. You watch the left and right side tires on each side of the, of the cars, and it's very, very easy to sort of dip those tires off into the dirt. When you do that, you'll be dragging that gravel back onto the racing surface. So look for that, especially that corner in particular, to really get difficult as this race moves on. Everywhere else, you have sort of that red curb on the inside that really keeps you off that dirt, um, you know, going around the perimeter of the racetrack. The course, you're really the only one that gets you right up on top of that gravel uh, off the black stuff. And this track is located two hours south of San Francisco, obviously between the cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles. It's a lot longer to drive to LA than it is to San Fran. But I feel like they should paint the dirt here much like they do at the Bahrain International Circuit. So it becomes like a pseudo sand. Well, the thing is, is that's difficult, Johnny, is that in this region of California, you all, you will oftentimes get flip-flops in terms of what the what will actually be happening on the outside of the racetrack. So obviously in Bahrain, that's a desert all year round. You normally only see Laguna Seca this dry in the summer months, and you actually see this as well. A couple other racetracks in North America that exhibit the same behavior, Sonoma. And while we don't have it on the sim, it's a track I've been to personally, Thunder Hill, which is in sort of the same region, kind of, you know, around oh. That, that, oh yeah, you see that, Arnold this makes that mistake in the course through that's going to allow Andre Cini to get into this but in the winter months when it gets a little bit cooler and the temperature drops off you actually will get grass growing around the circuit there's some uh, pictures oh, wow, of really? every year yeah you can look it up I'll, I'll show you some pictures uh, after the broadcast there's pictures of Sonoma in a very similar region where the entire runoff is just green instead of having the dirt and I've said for a while that I'd love to see the likes of IndyCar and NASCAR run there at a green Sonoma versus a sandy one as Arnold is going to have a peek to the outside once again but I don't think any we're near close enough to get that job he's, done. He's got to be careful of Cheney there behind. Just make sure when you show us those pictures that if it is live, you load up the right ones. Now, you don't well, want any family no photos or anything going up. You know, I'm, not, I'm not insinuating anything else, but um, <laughs> I could be. <laughs> I'm trying to cover it up. Um, I know this now. now. I've been in this situation before where you, know, you make a mistake early, or I had a race recently where I was on ultra high downforce at Watkins Glen, classic boot, so without the little chicane. And I was stuck behind someone who was, I think, 22 kilometers an hour faster than me on a straight. 
So all I did was I waited behind them for 12 laps and just saved the tires and on lap 13 got past them. Is that what Arnold should do right now? Play the long game? It's definitely something that I think you can lurk into do, lurk, uh, look into doing here um, as the uh, field works out. You know, especially this is such a difficult racetrack to really make passes on that in some ways you're going to have to play the patient game. Especially, actually, it's Harley Lewis going to leave that door open on the left-hand side for Martin Arnoldis. That's a rookie mistake from Lewis. You come off that final corner, you never want to leave that inside door open and Arnoldis, will he be able to step through it? Holds it on the apex, does Martin Arnoldis back into the lead now the question is he has to maintain this advantage he has to extend it here in the closing laps of this event it's still lap six of 22 so there's plenty of time remaining for the likes of harley lewis craig ridley or even andrea chini behind to promote themselves up the order but while we've said that chini has dropped to the fourth position and craigslist is into third yeah, so, I mean, these guys doing an absolutely great job right now as Craig's trying to work his way up the order as well, responded to get himself into the podium and onto the top three. But that's sort of one of the moves, Johnny, that you just have to protect yourself as you come off that final corner. You know, everyone talks about how difficult it is to pass here, how difficult it is to make moves, but it is actually really common. I've seen it quite a bit drivers making that mistake coming off the final corner, and they just sort of leave that door open. It's sort of a silly mistake to make. Um, you know, to leave an opportunity like that up for grabs for someone uh, on such a difficult racetrack such as this. And Ridley's driven splendidly so far this race. He's kept it consistent and he's only one and a half seconds off the lead. So he's got a great opportunity here to close the gap to Harley Lewis ahead. Of course, Chidi started on the front row, so he's down into fourth. It was Lewis and Ridley who occupied that second row of the grid. So those two have had a brilliant race so far. They just cannot let Arnoldus reel away right now. The gap six tenths of a second across the line last time. And so if Lewis loses that draft and loses the slipstream, it's almost race done. Yeah, I think you're right about that. It's, it's you know, you, you can't let that slipstream go away, especially as important as it is working down that front straightaway. I mean, we just had the lap, uh, the, excuse me, the, uh, uh, the movers and shakers kind of up on your screen those who have gained and lost positions and you know we're not seeing a, a you know we're, we're reaching the midway point of this race johnny and this is typically where you'd, you maybe start seeing at most other racetracks some drivers really moving up the running order might see a driver up five up six spots only you know we the most anyone's picked up since this drop of the green flag is two or three spots for the most part up and down the field john kern's one of those going from 12th up into p9 that's up three spots but it's mostly back markers the rest of the field up one maybe only two in this first sort of nine lap salvo and uh, that just speaks to how difficult it is to make moves here and get the job done around such a difficult and uh, tight circuit I love this circuit so much, you know, it's, I don't know why it's hated so much. And we raced here, uh, just what was it, how many hours ago for Porsche? Porsche, sorry. Um, uh, four or five? Six hours ago, Something yeah, like, like not that. even. Four. There was yeah, some like, um, there. Yeah, with the, oh, well, I'm not going <laughs> to, I woke up this morning to it, so I'm going to have to watch the race to discuss it, but I heard there was, uh, well, some of the private chats I was having with people, there was very very heated let me tell you that much i can't wait to watch the race back it was about like 2 a.m my time so i definitely wasn't going to watch it live yeah we're currently working actually right now the fight between john michael Noyon and carl crowley this is seventh and eighth on the racetrack about half a second separate these two as they go screaming up into the court screw and you see neither of them ever uh, being able to really make the move there and the thing that's going to be crazy for me here johnny is that you know, you look at these little open wheel pro Mazda cars and how, you know, crazy fast they're going around here and how difficult it is to make moves. We're only a few weeks out, IndyCar making their return to this racetrack. And you want to talk about big cars around a place like this. A lot of series history, of course, in that series around this racetrack. Uh, of course, the uh, the fate most, probably the most famous moment of Laguna Seca, the Alex Zanardi pass, that happening in, in IndyCar nearly coming up on 20 years ago, I think. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see these cars return to this iconic circuit uh, for the first time in a while and see exactly what kind of show that they can put on because compared to these cars, of course, much higher speeds and much more sensitive to the downforce levels as well. I'm just really excited to see how they handle turn six, the left-hander. We're watching Noyon and Crowley. Yeah. Noyon's had a poor start and he, uh, well, sorry, excuse me, had a good start. He's had a poor race since then because he was up into the top four at one stage and now he's down 
seventh. But this is that difficult left hand to return six. And the dip on the apex, you see Noyon there losing a bit of time. Now, you lose time here on iRacing when you drag yourself onto that outside curb on the exit. You could easily lose about two, three tenths there as the car begins to bottom out because there is no grip on that outside curb. And not only that, but that corner turn six, it's so difficult in so many different ways because you see Noyon get a little bit wide going off onto the gravel there. This might bring the 12 of Carl Crowley into this fight. Let's see what the exit's going to be. Of course, John Michael Noyon having that little bit of slipstream from Dane Nezek in front of him is going to help him considerably in being able to hold on to this little group. I don't think we're going to have an assault from position. That turn six as you really scream up the hill, you know, the, the second corner that brings you up the hill, it's turn five is kind of the first one. Uh, it's such a high commitment corner, Johnny, because as you said, you're right on the, you know, the very edge of the racetrack as you turn in. You're oftentimes you're using the curb as you turn in. Tires nearly on the dirt. You have, you know, basically I'd say maybe six inches of where you need to place those left side tires. Because if you, you're too far left, you smack one of those big red curbs, which are not smooth. It's actually oh, behind Noyon. Crowley's yeah, we got the spinner Crowley around. We'll get a quick replay of that up, but it shouldn't be a major incident for him in terms of damage. Just going to leave them a bunch of time might actually move them well down the running order um but you have that big red curve on the inside that if you hit it you break the car and if you're too far over on the right you just lose so much time and as you said if you track out too far you lose too much time on the uh on the uh, curbing as well such a different corner that turn six and it really is one i've always struggled with. yeah i think everybody struggled with that one at least once in their life uh, John Kern is behind Crowley. Now, the thing is, Kern was about eight tenths of a second slower than him in qualifying. So, very important that Crowley's been able to remain ahead. So, he's just going to have to pretty much trundle away here to win this race on a set of tires that are probably quite damaged. Now that we're halfway through the event, we've begun lap 11 here of 22. Arnoldus leads by a second and a half ahead of Harley Lewis. Ridley is behind, as you can see on your screen. Ridley is in the third position. Cheney ends up in the fourth position. So far, he's four seconds behind. Everybody is really separated by one second in your top seven because it's followed. Uh, following them is Perez, Nezic, Noyon, and of course, we just saw Crowley spin. He's down in the eighth position. Uh, Kern and Parker round out the top ten. Now, the thing is... I've seen better races from Gabriel Perez in the past. And one thing Perez likes to do, of course, is I don't know if he does it deliberately or whether he's, he doesn't practice as much in the Pro Mazda, but I really think Gabriel Perez, if he puts full effort in, can really win Pro Mazda races. You know, today's not his best day so far, but even though he's starting down the order here, Randy, I really feel like Gabriel Perez, second highest I-rated driver in the field, can easily finish on the podium. Yeah, I definitely think you're right. He's definitely a driver that has pace and definitely has consistency because that's really the two things you need when you move in towards the uh, the upper echelons of I rating. Is you, you not only need to be able to be fast and be able to run at the you know the front of fields, you better be able to to make the end of those races as well. Um, uh, that's why a lot of times I often say I rating is in some ways a, a bigger uh, measurement of how safe a driver is rather than their safety rating. Uh, because obviously if you lose, if you don't finish races, your I rating just falls like a stone when you get into those upper levels. But it could very well be just a situation of the schedule. We talked about it, Johnny, how a lot of the drivers, this isn't really a lot of people's most favorite circuit in the world, even though it's such a fun layout, has a lot of high-speed corners and is rather difficult and can at times put on some good close racing uh, as actually the fight between third and fourth is closing up a little bit, half a second between Craig Ridley and Andre Cini. Um, you know, a lot of people don't have the sort of laps around this place that they do at the other circuits. And I think maybe when you get a little bit deeper into the schedule, talk about Watkins Glen boot next week. Watkins Glen, of course. Oh, do we have a car off way wide off of turn seven, turn eight? No, I think we may have, but I think everyone's pretty much clear on the sides of that. But getting deeper into the Paul schedule. Crowley, yeah. yeah, you have Watkins Glen boot, perhaps even Brands Hatch, um, Interlagos in there. You have, of course, the Nürburgring a lot of people love, Road Atlanta, Silverstone. Uh, Catalonia when we get deeper into the schedule, Zandavort and Phillip Island. A lot of tracks that I think people are going to be a lot more familiar with here than he, uh, than here at Laguna Seca and may suit some people's driving styles. The fight for third is really heating up now inside this final 10-lap window. And Randy was talking about the spin for Carl Crowley, who hasn't been able to find his rhythm after the earlier spin at this corner. Turn five, an uphill left-hander with 
plenty of camber. Error there by Craig Ridley. Never do you see passes into turn six. And this is Chidi for third. Oh, but does he keep it on the racetrack? He does. Craig might have a slight advantage as they scream up here towards the corkscrew, but no, the move's not going to be on. Great move there by Andre Cini. And we talked about it just a couple of laps ago, Johnny, how difficult that corner is and how high commitment it has to be. We're going to watch this back on board with Andre as you see him going to set this move up and send it as they go up the hill. The margins here, so, so small in terms of being able to make a mistake and pretty much ruin your race here. But great driving there by both Andre Cini and by Craig Ridley to not end both of their races there going into turn six. Ridley has an opportunity here to begin this lap. Lap number 14 of 22 to come back past into that third position. But Cini, our uh, driver with the highest eye rating here out of these 15 is now onto the podium after starting this race from second. But pro Mazda extraordinaire, Martin Arnoldes is still running away with the lead here. 3.2 seconds ahead of Harley Lewis. I guess you could say Chini has a brilliant opportunity here as he was two tenths faster than Lewis in qualifying at least. He has a brilliant opportunity here to reel his way past Harley Lewis. If he can keep it together in these remaining laps, there's that error on the exit of turn six. Yeah, that's going to be the big thing, especially in these seven laps. And it's not a small gap that he has to reel in, Johnny. I mean, it's a two-second margin there close enough, Harley Lewis to Andre Cini. So he has to find nearly a half second, I think, a lap, I think, to make this likely for him to be able to reel in Harley, be able to get the job done. In some ways, as much as race drivers love to move forward and love to go faster and catch the cars in front of them, Johnny, I think Andre's focus needs to be on the car behind. I think Harley Lewis, unless he makes a mistake, I think catching Harley Lewis is a little bit unreal. Realistic, uh, whereas I think Andre definitely more than capable of holding off Craig Ridley here, just judging on their pace. And I know this, a 15.8 last lap around. That's quicker than his pole position time. He's blisteringly quick at the moment. Now, of course, with this V6 tire model, Randy, and the fact that the car in the Pro Mazda doesn't have the worst of tire wear, and fuel isn't that big of a deal in a 22-lap race, you can probably expect that midway through an event. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's one of the things as well, Johnny. I know you'll be more than knowledgeable. I don't actually know. Did you broadcast any of the world championships with the older F1 car, with the F the FW31? I know you were definitely a fan back yeah, then. Yeah, I did. So you did. So yeah, I, I was going um, to say that, you know, that's it's very similar to the Williams, how you sort of put just fuel in that thing, and it just sort of gets faster and faster and faster over the run because the tires seemingly never go away. At least they did never in those days. But actually, matter of fact, our uh, – our boss and a broadcast extraordinaire, Hugo Louise, he's actually told me stories of uh, him doing world championship races where he wouldn't change yeah. tires the entire run. I know you've heard that. <laughs> we've talked about it before. But, you know, it's yeah. a very similar phenomenon that these little Star Ma Pro Mazda cars put on as well. Well, that's the evolution of iRacing. V7, hopefully, I think still needs a bit of work on the open wheeler. And I think it has a lot of potential, but... Uh, definitely a lot of discussion going on with the Formula 3. Nah, so 37 that, page um, thread, it's fine. Yeah. Well, it's actually 39 now since we began that sentence, nice. I think. Nice. Two, page, so two pages and eight words. Job done, <laughs> Internet. It's, it's that heavily discussed. But um, nevertheless, it does have potential. So, so let's see where that goes. Um, yeah. I don't want to talk about it too much. There's six laps remaining. Let's not uh, divulge too much into... Uh, into the controversies that are uh, V7. It is very good, though, I have to say, when you drive it on the GTs or yeah. even the new TCR. I think, I think you know, obviously we're talking about the woes of the uh, the Formula 3 car at the moment, and I definitely think that it's irrelevant. Um, you know, I think it, it's kind of obvious. It's, oh, it's actually Andre Cini, big bounce. No other way to say a big bounce as he came out of the corkscrew, hopefully not <laughs> damaging anything of that. Well, the front tires came completely off the ground, at least they did on my end, so hopefully we are on the race spot channel, so I can say hopefully that wasn't net code, there, or hopefully that was a bit of no, net code there, but uh, I was going to mention that gap Harley Lewis to Andre Cini had been coming down, I mentioned it was about two seconds. Uh, it's down to about one second, maybe a second and a half, so it opened up a little bit, I think. Uh, after that little mistake. So Andre definitely is reeling in. Harley Lewis might have an opportunity for second here, but I, I don't think it's much of a surprise in some ways, Johnny, the, the woes with NTM7, at least on that F3 car, because it really is the first kind of high-speed, high-downforce um, you know, car with slick tires uh, 
that NTM7 is getting tested on in terms of the open wheelers. Um, so it's definitely a learning experience. I wouldn't be surprised. Remember, I also remember the Skip Barber. Very, very similar uh, kind of first response from the community where that was introduced, I think, what, about two seasons ago now? Yeah. Um, I mean, Monday Night Skippy's got put on hold. Well, uh, by the way, there's a battle between Parker and Andula here for ninth and 10th while we discuss this. But um, I think it's definitely... Um, it's going to take some time to master, but we're getting there. You know, and there definitely was uh, another open wheel car having issues with V7. So, look, you know what? Um, as long as it gets on the Pro Mazda, and hopefully the new Pro Mazda comes out, the Tatus, um, I've forgotten the model number, but it's been in development now for two years, I think. So, um, hopefully that comes out sometime soon. What, on iRacing? Or you mean in real life? Yeah. It's been in development. No, no, in, on iRacing. Yeah. I didn't know they had so, that in the... I didn't actually know about that. It's, it's been work in progress for a couple of years, so I'm really hoping it does come out. But um, I'm just waiting for Andula here as we focus back on the racing action to possibly make a move on Brenton Parker, but uh, looks like it's going to be a difficult one. He's got a great draft here, though, heading into turn one in the downhill braking zone. Yeah, we're going to shift on board here and to the outside is where he's going to have to try to make the move stick. And a little hot, I think, actually was Brenton Parker, but unable to actually respond to that with Andila. Just hit run, not into turn one. Oh, not that great into turn one. And actually a little bit wide through turn two as well. But, well, there, excuse me, so Andula uh, losing himself a fair bit of time in that respect. Also checking back in with Andre Cini and the likes of Craig Ridley. That gap has started to open back up. And the gap to Harley Lewis really hasn't come down. So it's this fight for ninth and 10th that's going to remain the closest on the racetrack. And in these final couple laps, Johnny, I think if you're Andula, what you really have to do, you need to try to sell a, a, a dummy to Brenton Parker. You need to try to, you know, almost yeah, go into exactly. turn one. You kind of have to fake to the right and get Brenton to sort of try to block that right-hand side of the racetrack and in the last moment dive up the inside there in towards turn one. Um, if you just sort of stay locked behind him and let him stay down there, you're never going to get that move done. I was expecting to see the outside line work, but we haven't seen it all race, really. And if you're Parker, you can't get sucked into that. You just have to defend the inside. I think he's got a comfortable advantage here with a couple laps remaining. But this action is going to spice up here on lap 20 or 22. And talking about spicy foods... I hope no one can tell, but I ate something really spicy the other day. Oh, wide, <laughs> wide actually is Parker in oh. turn one. Oh, yes, he is, exactly. You can see Brenton Parker there. He's going to remain, though, ahead of Andorla. And Andorla. I've got to <laughs> ask, Johnny. I've got to ask. You're talking <laughs> yeah. about spicier food. What was spicier, your lunch or Parker's entry into turn one? I think, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Mine is definitely more spicy than that. Parker's kept it together. My spicy food, my tongue is completely burnt right now. I can't even speak. But I basically would have been all four wheels off the car, out of Laguna Seca. I would have been towed back to the pit lane without pressing the escape button. You would have been badly. in the Monterey Aquarium. Yeah. Would have been... Mate, I think I would have been in New York with how uh, bad or how hot I would be in turn one. That's Nevertheless, quite, though, I'm not... The shun. <laughs> I'm not this year with uh, lap 21 to 22. Is uh, only a couple laps remaining. He's begun the penultimate lap. He's um, how do you handle this, Randy? Now as a leader, you know you don't want to make mistakes. You you can't overthink a situation like this. You have a four. You, what you do is you look at your relative black box. You see a 4.4 second lead, and you basically have to say to yourself, right? If I crash and throw this away, I'm literally the dumbest person on the planet. That's that's how you handle this. You're going to be so sorry if I know this does that. Uh, no. <laughs> Well, I know this hopefully with a one and a half laps remaining should be okay. He's more than a veteran, is he, in Pro Master? And everybody, including ourselves, thank all his contributions to the Pro Master community. Build uh, and keep it alive and uh, keep the reinforcement going as he has for many seasons and years here. Here he crosses the line. He has one lap remaining. White flag waves for Arnoldus. Behind, though, the battles continue between Chini and Ridley here on the final lap for third and fourth. And, of course, Parker and Andorla. But the rest of the positions look pretty sealed. 
Perez, though, very close to Noyon, right behind Ridley. Yeah, I've just seen that actually update on the timing and seen how close that was. I don't think there's oh, going to be close enough. It. Oh, my Lord. He's <laughs> hotter into that corner than Johnny's Lunch and Brenton Parker combined, I think, <laughs> and just barely missed the back of that number four car. We'll check in the fight for ninth and tenth as they hit oh, in towards turn one this time. What'd you get? Sorry. Perez is through, Perez is through past Noyon here on the final lap. Brilliant pressure there by Gabriel Perez, and he promotes himself into the top five. Yep, so he works up here through turn number five. Make sure you don't push wide here in towards turn six. The run into the court screws and four cars, surely. Noyon not gonna look into it here, and he won't, but going into the court screw, will it be as an already move? John Michael, I think, has a move. He might have the run. Let's see if he goes forward. Answer is gonna be no. That's probably a wise decision as Arnoldis works his way off the final corner. Martin Arnoldis at Laguna Seca, week one, season four for 2019 wins in the Pro Mazda Championship. Brilliant victory by our veteran extraordinaire of Pro Mazda for Martin Arnoldis. Lewis will cross the line on the podium positions. Brilliant race for him after leading some opening laps. Cheney ends up on the podium, of course, after his poor getaway off the line. Ridley will remain behind Cheney and unfortunately is off the podium, but Perez at the end of the day rounds out the top five. Able to defend there, Randy, by one-tenth of a second ahead of Jean-Michel Noyon. We got quite an exciting finish. Yeah, we definitely did. A lot of cars close together. We're watching the 11 and the 7 of Parker and Dula. They're coming across right now, running in their order. They're, you know, just separated by a couple of tenths as well. And uh, that's the thing about this racetrack, Johnny. It's, it's one of those where e even though you can't run side by side and maybe you don't get the sort of slipstream effect that you do at a track like Spa, this is one of those racetracks where when you have one of those close races, it's just so, so, so much more intense. A lap close with someone around Laguna Seca I think might be a bit more crazy and a bit more stressful than a close lap with someone around, uh, around say, a track like Spa. But let's hit your post-race results. <laughs> Here are our final race results for week one, season four, 2019 of the Pro Mazda Championship. Martin Arnoldis, Victor, to kick off the season in 28 minutes of racing action. He won over Harley Lewis, who of course led some opening laps after Arnoldis made that mistake at turn six. Arnoldis was able to pass him, and that demoted Lewis in that second position for the rest of the event. Andrea Cini, our highest I-rated driver for the day, came home rounding out the podium just ahead of Craig Ridley, who would be disappointed not being on the podium, but had a good event nevertheless. Started fourth, ended up in fourth. Can't complain for Craig Ridley. Perez rounded out the top five, followed by Jean-Michel Neon. Those two were in a nice scrap there in the final lap of the event. Perez, with that move on the final lap, putting the pressure on Neon, grabs himself a top five finish. Nezic ended up in seventh. The rest of the top 10 included Kern. Of course, Parker nicked that ninth spot ahead of Andorla there in the closing stages. Only two other drivers left on the opening lap. That was Donald Poole and Greg Garris. Kyle Crowley with issues ended up two laps behind. Still classified at the end of the day. And Pascal Pilotto had some issues. Rejoined the race, of course. Ended up five laps behind. Unclassified Carlos Medina, though had some troubles in the opening stages of the race and had to pull the pin, pull the plug on his event this time out for Pro Master. So Randy, what a race it was here for Laguna Seca. Now overtaking is going to be a lot easier next week on our schedule, of course. But the next week for Pro Master that we broadcast, so next week wouldn't be a Watkins Glen for the official championship. The next race we broadcast is Brands Hatch. That's always a fun race in Pro Master vehicles. Yeah, Brands Hatch, definitely a difficult racetrack. And I think the racing we're going to see at Brands Hatch, Johnny, is probably going to be, I think, very similar to what we just saw today. Brands Hatch, you really don't have any super long straights. You have the back straight going into what is, I believe, turn five, if I remember off the top of my head correctly. Um, super interesting racetrack, but it's a lot of sort of technical, single file sort of, uh, sort of racing that you typically get um, around that racetrack. Definitely an interesting track, and... Uh, it's going to put on a good show. And we talked about um, a little bit here. Uh, how how loud is my microphone, Johnny? No, it's pretty good, I think. <laughs> we'll check. Hold on. I'll give. I'll open up Windows Sound Settings, and I'll see what happened. Uh, hopefully nothing's gone awry, because according to Windows, things have stayed the same. 
But um, I think the first the first word you said. I may have I yelled might not it. be able to go. I might not be able to go to sleep for the next three hours or something <laughs> like that. I'm literally, I literally jumped off my chair. I hope it didn't come through on the microphone. I hope so. Hopefully it did. I will say, Johnny, we talked about this during the race about how these tracks in Northern California can get green. I'm going to send you the picture on yeah. TeamSpeak so you can see it at the same time. Oh, not live on the broadcast? No, we're going to get it on the broadcast too. That's just for you to see. So we'll hit our transition and see that Laguna Seca, of course, but. That's what Sonoma looks like in the winter months. When it gets cool, you get that grass all the way around the racetrack. Um, you typically will see IndyCar test days in the preseason. They'll often hit Sonoma either at the beginning or the end of the year, and the track will look like this. Uh, I know that Laguna Seca can look very similar as well, and I've seen Thunder Hill, like I said, when I went, it was like this, uh, especially when we have a nice rainy winter. Um, these racetracks in Northern California get a nice green to them. Uh, and I think I would love to see one of these racetracks, John. And we know we have the dynamic weather that we had. I, I would love to see the art team actually work on a couple of these tracks in this region and have them in the winter months turn a little bit more green. That'd be sort of a great kind of immersive thing as the year goes on um, to see the racetracks change in some ways with the weather. Now, that said, you'll have to make some omissions because I know that, like, let's say the Nürburgring tends to be covered in snow in December. Uh, and I don't think anyone wants to wants that with their sim racing experience. <laughs> well, I mean, you could add some snow tires, have a bit of fun on that, and uh, you can uh, love it at the end of the day. But uh, I think some people really are shot. thinking the F3 car right now is on snow tires. Hey, well, yeah. <laughs> um, that's a that's a thrilling shot at snow. I never knew that that was uh, possible in California. That's from our own Randy Chenneth, of course, uh, lives and That was from the Sonoma Twitter, by the way. Ah, yes. So, um, yep, yeah, Randy Chenneth, who's uh, from California himself, knows it like the back of his hand. And uh, we will wrap up today's broadcast, of course, in just a moment's time. I think out of the broadcasted races, I can't really pick a track that... I'm looking forward to more than the other. I love Brands Hatch. Interlagos is always fun racing. Zandvoort, I think, will be very similar to today, like Laguna Seca. But for Barcelona and Phillip Island, uh, we should get some thrilling action at those two tracks as well. I'm definitely, I have to say, I think the highlight track, at least for me, has to be Barcelona, just because it's the first time. Obviously, these guys would have probably tested these cars on it, so they're probably going to know. And obviously, it's sort of a, a feeder series formula car going to a big... Uh, FIA grade one style racetrack you know it's going to be big slipstream into turn one probably having the cars trimmed out and just struggling with the lack of downforce everywhere else but uh with that just being the first trip we have there it's going to be I think you know there's, it's going to be a, a you know kind of a special special event in that regards but if we're ready Johnny I think you're good to close it out most certainly of course the next broadcast action will be at the same time that will be at 8 p.m. GMT, and that will be on Race Spot TV. They will, and we will present all that action here live, of course, for round three, five, 10, 11, and 12 for weeks in the season. Uh, season four, 2019, is it, Randy? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, just confirming. Uh, for the Pro Mazda Championship, visit racespot.tv for more information, of course, on that. Visit iRacing.com to join in on the action you've seen on display in today's event. From myself, Jonathan Simon, and my spicy bit tongue, which I've struggled to speak with, I hope you've been able to, <laughs> to bear with me for today's action. Our brilliant Randy Chennis have been alongside me in commentary and production. We say so long from Laguna Seca, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time at Brands Hatch.